Please be seated. The court is now back in session. As we informed the parties in the public today, there are two separate proceedings, and for this second session, we will hear opinions of the parties. In relation to the hearing of the testimony of Philip Short, who is scheduled to be heard from the 1st to the 8th of October 2012. And as we inform all, all the parties and as you heard uh, the opinion from the two doctors this morning regarding the health status of Mr. Ying Sari at the present time and in the very near future, which will not allow him to participate in the proceedings. For that reason, we like to hear opinions of the parties as to how we shall proceed with the hearing of the testimony of Philip Short as scheduled and if it is uh, possible to do so. First, we'd like to give the floor to the prosecution. You may proceed. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. President, Your Honours, uh, Council, and, and people around the court. Uh, Your Honours, um, I know my presence is uh, very recent, but uh, I've been following the proceedings this morning and, and speaking with uh, the prosecutor and, and the prosecutors in court. Today, and um, in brief, our position is that um, we don't um, oppose the um, or the adjournment of uh, the expert Philip Short's testimony, um, based based on a, on a few factors. Um, firstly, uh, we don't oppose because, as as we can see today, um, some uncertainty has arisen in relation to uh, the immediate health, at least, of, uh, of Mr. Yang Sari. Uh, we're aware of the expert reports looking at his fitness in terms of his uh, mental fitness um, only recently, the 3rd of September, and it's clear that their view was he's fit to plead, but um, since that time, um, some new information has arisen in relation to his physical health, not his mental health. And it's really unclear uh, from the testimony this morning um, what that treatment should be, and also um, what the uh, effect um, of the, uh, his physical health condition is, is on his mental health. That was sort of unclear because the witnesses this morning, as your honours have rightly said, um, uh, were not experts in, in, in that particular field, but uh, very informative and provided valuable testimony uh, nonetheless. In relation to that, uncertainty as to his health, uh, in addition to um, the current situation that we're in with uh, the defence for Yang Sari um, intending, uh, certainly from the letters they have put forward, or the letter they put forward, intending not to uh, prolong uh, the proceedings by agreeing to uh, waiving uh, Mr. Yang Sari's uh, right to be present for a number of witnesses, for eight witnesses, and also agreeing to um, waive that right in relation to document presentations, particularly in relation to uh, this, this stage of the case, the uh, authority structure and communication structure, and um, document presentations in relation to the... Um, the admissibility of, of witness statements. Uh, certainly, <clears throat> the prosecution of the view, looking at, looking at the 
the number of witnesses uh, the defence at this stage are prepared to waive and looking at the procedural hearings that uh, they're also prepared, Yang Sari is prepared to waive his presence for in, in court. Our estimation, uh, particularly in relation to witnesses uh, 475, 428, 320, 389 and 186, in addition to uh, a document presentation which your honours have uh, um, requested the parties to be ready for in the next couple of weeks. We have put forward to um, the senior legal officer that uh, we would take one and a half days, we would like one and a half days, to present documents on the authority and communication structure. In addition to perhaps a possible hearing on witness statement admissibility, um, our calculation is that uh, with those waivers, um, there's another, uh, certainly another four weeks of court, available court time that would be well used uh, listening to um, witnesses that uh, your honours have uh, wanted to call in this case and um, also listening to document presentations uh, that your honours have wanted to hear. So in terms of the trial moving forward, which is a, a, an extremely important issue, issue for the prosecution, um, the trial can move forward. In this, um, in this present time when there's a, um, a state perhaps of uncertainty as, as to the nature of the effect of the, um, the current medical condition on Mr. Yang Sari. And in short, nothing is lost um, by proceeding in that way. Um, and certainly we would say that um, before uh, the court gets to a situation where it has to consider issues of uh, substantial delay to the trial and um, no waivers being given in relation to witnesses being heard uh, by any of the defence. Um, before we reach that stage, uh, we're certainly of the view that um, Rule 81.5 uh, reflects uh, the international jurisprudence that um, all other alternatives um, should be uh, considered before starting to address the idea of limiting a, an accused right. Um, and so we believe we're not at that stage yet where that discussion um, is in fact um, a, a worthwhile one because of um, the uh, position that the Yang Sari defence have taken that um, they are prepared, or Yang Sari is prepared to hear witnesses, particularly ones which um, don't directly relate to his acts and conduct, uh, nor to the, uh, the structure of the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, and if we, if we combine that with um, the position of the expert, and uh, we noticed we received a report yesterday from the uh, witness expert and support unit stating that um, it is in fact um, the preference of uh, Professor Short to give testimony in early 2013, which in reality is only a few months away, um, because of his current uh, workload. And um, that was the preference that he made um, earlier. And uh, now that this situation has arisen, uh, where other witnesses can be heard, we're of the view that um, we, it's, it's of benefit to the, the witness, it's of benefit to um, uh, uh, the accused, and it's of benefit to the trial chamber that um, the trial can continue without great legal debate on whether it should or not. Um, and so... Um, we, our, our view would be in terms of, particularly I think in light of the fact that uh, Mr. Short um, lives in America and um, for the, uh, the time, I believe, and, and for the, he's overseas in any event, and so for the time that it would uh, be required for him to travel, um, that, that decision uh, would really need to be taken today, I, I would suggest. Um, and even on the evidence this morning, 
even in the, in, in the best of situations where um, the weekly report on Mr. Yang Sari was uh, obtained next week, and um, that report said, look, um, he's physically fit, he should come back and um, participate in the hearing, that, that week would be too long, um, or would be too late uh, to provide uh, an answer to Professor Short. So to be on the safe side in terms of um, the trial management um, aspect of this, we would suggest that um, uh, the uh, adjournment um, really um, is beneficial to, to everyone um, in the court. Um, it's, it's difficult at times to not have the witnesses appear in the exact order that we would like, but in nature, in light of um, the, uh, the nature of this case and uh, uh, you know, the age of uh, the accused and, and other complicating factors, I think as long as the witnesses that um, are intended to be called do come, if not in the perfect order, um, that would um, still um, not really be of any sort of major detriment to the case. In, just on, just on uh, this point in relation to um, the uh, physical health of Mr. Yang Sari, one thing we would ask um, in conjunction with uh, um, our request that uh, the uh, Professor Short's uh, testimony be uh, moved to another date uh, is that um, we would request that Your Honours, um, under Rule 32, um, call for a neurologist, a, a national and international neurologist, um, to examine Mr. Yang Sari you know, with the greatest of urgency so that we can actually get um, the, the true situation in relation to his health. Uh, it's clear that these doctors are referring to, uh, testify this morning, are referring to consultants. And I think it's uh, uh, certainly now is the time in relation to the new revelation that um, uh, experts be assigned by the court and um, produce neuro neurological experts and produce a report as soon as possible so um, we know exactly um, the state of Mr. Yang Sari's um, physical health. Um, thirdly, uh, we would also ask, um, as we have um, in our motion on um, the 19th of uh, September, just a couple of days ago, E299-1, we would also ask, in order to, to ensure that uh, perhaps we don't um, perhaps have these discussions every every week and, and be in a position in not knowing what witnesses uh, can be called and, and can't be called, that um, Your Honours um, ask the uh, Yang Sari uh, defence team and, and obviously Yang Sari himself to consider the, uh, the 35 witnesses that we have placed in this uh, notice to the court that um, would relate to the forced transfer <coughs> aspect of the case, the first force transfer from Phnom Penh and also the second uh, force transfer during the um, DK period. And the reason why we ask this now is that um, certainly on the basis of um, the waivers given to date, it appears that um, the Yang Sari defence or Yang Sari himself uh, may well be prepared to uh, waive witnesses that don't directly relate to his acts and conduct nor the structure of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And certainly we can say, in relation to the forced transfer witnesses, that um, uh, nearly all of them and, um, do not give evidence uh, directly against Yang Sari nor uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And so by doing so and, and by encouraging the parties to do so, say, perhaps within the next week, we can be in a situation where we have a bank of witnesses, um, who knows, potentially 20 witnesses that can be called that uh, the defence may waive their right to, the Yang Sari defence may waive their right to, um, so that uh, the trial can be continuous whilst um, 
the, uh, the state of uh, um, Mr. Yang Sari's health is being, is being determined. And certainly in, in line with that motion, uh, we've approached um, the Yang Sari defence uh, just before court. And uh, we certainly um, have an invitation. We've always uh, generally uh, cooperated well in the past that we would um, uh, meet them perhaps on Monday to determine uh, which other witnesses they may consider on this notice um, that uh, their client uh, may be willing to waive their right. And we just encourage your honours to um, perhaps prompt um, the parties to do that um, so that uh, we avoid um, any unnecessary delays because of the unpredictability of the immediate state of Yang Sari's health. So, Your Honour, to conclude, um, the prosecution, I think, uh, like everyone, of course, uh, wants to make sure that this trial is, is fair and expeditious. Um, they're, they're rights that need to be balanced together. And uh, we submit that um, by uh, adjourning Philip Short's uh, testimony, hearing the witnesses that uh, Yang Sari have already said they have wa uh, waived their right to, and considering another list of witnesses that uh, they may be prepared to waive their right to, and appointing uh, an international and national expert neurologist, perhaps the, the same national one that's uh, uh, been uh, seeing Mr. Yang Sari now, and ordering that they give a report um, in, in the very short future, um, would uh, ensure uh, the common goal of making sure that this trial is expeditious and also fair. That's all my submissions, Your Honour. Thank you, Prosecutor. We would like now to give the floor to the lead co-lawyers for civil parties. Mr. President, distinguished members of the bench, dear colleagues, let me share the position of the civil parties. Perhaps by beginning at the end, I could say that the civil parties have decided to fully support the position of the prosecution. Prior to that, perhaps I should inform you of the reasons for which we reach that particular decision. I think it's important, in particular for those who it is our job to defend. We took the decision taking due account of the obvious point which is the right of an accused person to be present at their trial to deliver instructions and to be able to react directly when a witness or an expert is questioned but you cannot invoke that particular right without also taking account of the right of the civil parties in particular that which emanates from rule 21 of the internal rules on the balancing of the rights of the parties and in the same rule the stipulation that you have to protect the rights and the guarantee of those rights of the civil parties to have a fair trial. That is in fact supported by the Declaration on Fundamental Justice Principles. It's a decision of the 29th of November 1985 and so it would be a grave mistake not to remember that the sole right of the accused it is not the sole right of the accused uh, that prevail it is the need for a balance between the parties rights uh, a 76 year old civil party this morning uh, passed away and that for example is an example of a person who will also not see a fair trial let me say that we do regret that the situation that we have uh, reached today is something that has perhaps been anticipated bearing in mind their age and their status of their health so we believe that we have to plan for a dual agenda so that the hearings can continue and not be interrupted as they have so far. 
On the subject of anticipation, I would also add that we are also concerned by the contents of the letter of the 17th of September 2012 by the Yang, from the Yang Sari Defence, because in that letter, the Council points out that uh, they are not only able to prepare for Philip Shorten, they will not be present during the hearing, but also that for the moment, Mr. Yang Sari is not ready, able to prepare for Elizabeth Becker, and we should therefore consider perhaps the uh, postponement of her uh, attendance here. And I think that we really have to be properly prepared so that we're not going to be raising the same questions in a few days or a few weeks as the ones that we are raising in this courtroom today. Having said that, we have heard today that there is nothing new on the map regarding Yang Sari's psychological problems. We have heard that there are physical ailments and the doctors cannot share with us exact timescales about the medical developments. And therefore, to come to the conclusion that I have already stated, we support, to, we support the prosecution's position, even if at the outset we would have preferred to have maintained Mr. Philip Short's hearing because we believe that in the medical documents there were no particular reasons for a deferral. We accept the decision, we accept the proposal from the co-prosecutors because we don't want to trigger procedural difficulties and because we believe that if the chamber is able quickly to speak specify the contents of forthcoming hearings in terms of experts and witnesses and so forth, then we can continue in a normal way. We accept also to support the prosecution because we have listened to uh, Yang Sari's proposal to uh, be absent for the hearing of certain witnesses, and we do believe that that is a way not to impede the advancement of the trial. So we support the request to defer the hearing of Mr. Philip Short. We would ask the Chamber to provide us with a program for the forthcoming hearings as soon as possible. We hope that the Chamber will ask the Yang Sari Defence about precisely what their intentions are vis-à-vis -vis Elizabeth Becker so that the Chamber can plan in time for that situation and, if necessary, make a deferral in her case as well. Finally we demur to the request of the co-prosecutors uh, to have two experts come and provide the chamber and the parties concerned, in other words, the civil parties as well, with regular reports that will allow us to assess the situation in a precise kind of way. That is the situation and the position of the civil parties. Thank you, Mr. President. Good. Thank you. The chamber would like now to hear the opinion from the defense teams. If any other defense teams wish to speak regarding this matter, please uh, take the floor. Michael Canavas, please proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and good afternoon, everyone in and around the courtroom. Uh, let me begin by stating that we are grateful to the prosecution's position. We think it's a reasonable one and a pragmatic one. Uh, <clears throat> we believe that that is the only possible solution at this time. <clears throat> Let me begin by saying that for the last four years plus, the Inksury defense on behalf of Inksury have uh, cooperated enormously with uh, the trial chamber, and Ms. Inksury in particular has shown an exceptional a willingness to engage in this institution, albeit as, uh, as an accused being tried for some very serious crimes. Uh, when we learned of Ms. Singsri's health, we were proactive. We immediately, immediately looked at the list of witnesses. We consulted with our client, and we were able to come up with a list of eight uh, witnesses that Mr. Inksri uh, voluntarily waived his right to be present. 
I think we all understand that right, so I'm not going to go into it. Uh, however, I do wish to uh, address one particular point, especially made by the civil parties, where they say that they saw no particular reasons for deferral of Mr. Short in light of what they saw in the medical reports. Now, we heard the doctor today. I tried to press him about concentration. And when I questioned him, he needed a neurologist. But pressed later, one, he admitted to my first question, which was, the brain is not getting sufficient oxygen. Two, that the slightest bit of, uh, of commotion causes him to be dizzy. How on earth can someone like this, in this condition, possibly be able to assist in his own defense? We're not saying that he's mentally unfit, but what we are saying is that at the current status, he's unable for more than a few minutes to uh, concentrate with his lawyers, let alone concentrate in watching uh, the proceedings for, from 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock with the breaks, of course. So in light of all of that, for all intents and purposes, he's not just physically incapable, he's also uh, mentally incapable of following the proceedings and assisting in his own defense. Because I need more than five minutes at a time to consult with him. And as I've noted in my letter, it was when we went to meet with him on that Friday, the same day that he was hospitalized, it was for Philip Short. And we were going through Philip Short's passages in his book, which is also in French, which assists Mr. Inksiri, uh in, uh in reading those passages and in, in discussing with us what he believes took place during the interviews that he had with Mr. Short. As for Becker, let me just make, let me just uh, dispense with that very quickly. Anyone that has read my letter ought to know, or letters, the letters that we both of us sent. Uh, it's very, very clear. If he's not capable to assist in his own defense for Philip Short, he's certainly not capable for assisting in his own defense in Elizabeth Becker. And he is not waiving his right to assist in his own defense with those witnesses. So we made it very, very clear. A follow-up letter was sent out concerning the prosecutor's uh, latest uh, request concerning some 35 witnesses. We sent out an email uh, out of uh, respect for the uh, emergency situation to let everybody know where we stand, where we indicated that uh, of our willingness to meet with our client and to go through the list of names Fair to say, however, that of the names that were proposed by the prosecution, uh, we're not certain at this time, no one is, how many of those witnesses actually will be accepted by the trial chamber. Now, I have no problem sitting with Mr. Smith or his team uh, to go over the names, uh, and then we could do that with our client. But the sooner the trial chamber makes a decision on which witnesses they wish to hear for that area, uh, the, uh, the sooner we can uh, begin with some certainty to give further notice to the trial chamber uh, on that. Uh, we concur that uh, neurologists should be consulted. We have always been in full agreement that Mr. Inkstree get the proper medical attention because it's in his best interest uh, that, he, uh, that he is fit, and as I've indicated, and as we have proved, and I think his, the defense team that he's chosen and the instructions that he's given the defense teams and the demands that he has put on the defense team demonstrates uh, that we are engaging uh, uh, in this case in a very robust manner so that at the end of, the, of these proceedings, at least one thing cannot be said, and that is that Mr. Inksree did, suffered from uh, a lack of defense. So to that extent, I think that we've demonstrated our willingness uh, at every level, and Mr. Inksiri certainly has demonstrated his willingness at every level to uh, participate. 
Uh, finally, with respect to Philip Short and video links and what have you, I just want to touch on one issue because I, don't, I see it as a non-starter, at least with it, when it comes to Mr. Ng Sri. Of course, when it came to, to Kiernan, you've already indicated that uh, video link uh, testimony is for exceptional circumstances. These are not exceptional circumstances. Uh, Philip Short has indicated 2013 he is clearly available. There's no compelling reason why he must testify in 2012, even though I see that there's some claim that the cost could be anywhere from 200 to 700. My last uh, estimation was that it costs approximately 100 euro to change the travel date of a ticket. So where these costs come in, I don't know. But be that as it may, even if it was 700, uh, it certainly pales when, when comparing uh, what is at stake at the other end, and that is violating somebody's rights. And uh, so the, the video link doesn't, doesn't work. Mr. Singsi will not cons consent to that. And if you were not to consent to that, then I think we need to look at Rule uh, 81.5. Uh, which deals with trials in absentia, because that's what this would amount to. It would be, amount to a trial in absentia, because if we are not, a, if, if Mr. Inksiri, if Mr. Inksiri is not able to participate in his own defense, and if Mr. Inksiri does not authorize his attorneys to proceed forward and is unable to give instructions, then obviously we cannot be in this courtroom representing him. And so effectively, he would be, uh, this would amount to a trial in absentia, albeit just for Philip Short. And when you look at 81.5, and you look at it carefully, especially 81.5b, there is a presumption that the accused is capable mentally and physically of participating because 81.5b effectively states where the accused absence causes a substantial delay and where the interests of justice so require, and we're suggesting that's not the case, the trial chamber may order, may order that the accused's participation be by audio-visual means. So our starting position is that he's incapable because he has been participating. And if he was capable, he would be in the holding cell. So I don't think that in the immediate future we can proceed by video link with Mr. Short solely in order to meet uh, the, uh, the scheduling that we have when, in fact, no one, no one will be prejudiced if Philip Short appears in 2013 because, as the prosecution pointed out, and as we endeavored to do so uh, through our letters with the court, that there's enough business that we can conduct in this trial that is necessary and reasonable between now and, say, the end of the year when we can have a better look to see uh, where Mr. Inksiri is. And the doctors, although it wasn't a rosy picture today, seem to indicate that a month or two months down the road, Mr. Inksiri may be fit to continue in assisting in participating in his own defense. So I want to, uh, again, commend the prosecution for taking a very reasonable approach. Monday, we will make ourselves available to go over the entire list. I can't guarantee that we're going to come up with too many names. Uh, certainly, we will talk to them, and then we will talk to our client. We will do whatever uh, we possibly can to ensure that the proceedings uh, continue. And, of course, we would encourage the trial chamber to set up a scheduling uh, order to set out a scheduling order 
uh, with respect to all the other businesses, especially the 1,400 statements that the trial, that the uh, prosecution wished to have admitted. I think this is going to take a substantial period of time. I think these discussions ought to take place in public. The parties will need some time to look over those statements in, in order to make uh, proper oral or written submissions, whatever the case may be, or a combination. But we do have enough work ahead of us that we will not and should not lose any time while Mr. Inksri is, is given time to recuperate. And I want to thank the trial chamber for setting today's hearings and for calling the doctors and to hearing from the doctors. And perhaps next time we may need to hear with the specialist as well. Thank you. President, thank you, Council. I would like to now hand over to the other defense teams. If you have any observation to make, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning or good afternoon. Um, I, I had some, some um, uh, very brief uh, remarks. First of all, um, we welcome the flexibility of all the parties um, on this particular issue, and I'm sure we would all welcome to the flexibility of the trial chamber. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to briefly um, uh, note that um, uh, this uh, flexibility also applies for our client. Um, he is more than willing, like Ying Sari has shown today, to expedite the proceedings as much as possible. Um, I would like to point out that he has almost every afternoon waived his right to participate in these proceedings. I, I, real, I realize saying that, that uh, your honors every afternoon order court officials to install a video link and other technical equipment to allow my client to participate. But I would like to stress, uh, like we've done in the past on several occasions, that uh, this video link does not mean that he's actually following the procedures, uh, let alone effectively participate. A television screen does not miraculously cure an accused able ability to uh, uh, participate in his or her proceedings. Uh, having said this, um, uh, we uh, uh, fully support the position taken by the Yang Sari defense uh, on the issue of Short and Elizabeth Becker. Thank you very much. President, thank you, Council. Now I hand over to the other, the other defense team. Council Kung Simon. Thank you, Mr. President, and good afternoon, Your Honours. Through my observation of our uh, previous he hearing, the uh, parties uh, have agreed on the legal principle relating to the right of the accused to confront witnesses, and I do not need to labor, labor this point. I simply would like to ask uh, for clarification on the uh, flexibility of schedule, because it was not uh, something that was uh, scheduled earlier. It is prepared uh, for something that we have not actually scheduled so far. And this is meant uh, for the parties, uh, the civil parties, and especially the accused who are now in their advancing age. And we have to anticipate uh, some uh, problems in relation to the uh, presence of them. And I think that the flexibility that the chamber is now allowing is very important because that should be uh, the uh, possibility to accommodate the request uh, by uh, parties. For example, in this case, Mr. Philip 
short uh, has deliberately mentioned that uh, he will not be available for the uh, testimony uh, sometime next year. And this will uh, facilitate uh, the witnesses uh, to come to testify at their appropriate time. So the uh, testimony itself will be uh, meaningful because there, was, uh, there is cooperation by the uh, witnesses. And if uh, we cannot accommodate their request, uh, probably they, can, they might not come to testify uh, with uh, happiness. So I uh, appreciate the flexibility of the uh, trial chamber in this respect. The President, thank you. President. Now the discussion in relation to the schedule summon of testimony by uh, expert Philip uh, Short uh, is now uh, done and the chamber appreciate the expression of uh, observation of all parties involved in relation to the uh, testimony of Mr. Philip Short as well as the uh, challenges we have to overcome. The Chamber will take into consideration uh, every observation made by parties and we will uh, render a memorandum of understanding in due course sometime next week. And the Chamber wishes to advise the party uh, and members of the public uh, that uh, the hearing will resume uh, on the 25th of September, which uh, will be on Tuesday next week on TCW 475. And 
Mr. Ying Sari has uh, requested uh, that uh, he be uh, present to hear the testimony of this witness. Then uh, that is uh, the request uh, made by uh, him. Uh, but uh, that is what he uh, suggests. But as scheduled, the chamber will resume the hearing on the 25th of uh, September 2012 with uh, the state witness. The time is now appropriate for the uh, adjournment. So the chamber will adjourn now for the day, and then we will resume on the 25th of September starting at 9. The court is now adjourned.